Hello my fellow YouTubians, this is Pool Shark Wizard and today guys we are back with Feed the Beast on the Block Party server. The Block Party server is a server for um, guests and moderators on the Shaft podcast. So um, I was both a guest on there on episode 95 and I've also been a moderator on the Shaft podcast for quite some time now. So this server is reserved for us folks and we have a pretty darn good time uh, playing it to say the least we help each other out a ton um, I'd like to start out by um, showing this real quick I found this out uh, last night while um, Josh SDH was streaming um, how, remember last time we did this uh, logging program edit logging right here so um, I had to go in here and I had to type all this stuff out. But I found out la I found out last night that you can just use Pastebin. If you guys find a code that's on Pastebin and want to use it on your turtle, it is super simple to do. All you basically have to do, and I do have um, I do have a uh, code set up. So hang on, hang on, quick guys. I'm gonna go copy the uh, code and see if I can open it up. Hey so guys, we up. are back and now let's open this up. Let's first uh, exit out of here because we don't need to save it. But uh, this is really cool. Pastebin is um, a web page that's out there that people throw it, put down um, coding for turtles and uh, computers and that sort of thing. And it's really cool because um, it's super simple to do. All we basically have to do here is if we find a code that we like you will just um, copy over the and I can hit control V here it, it would look like this right so when you're when you're looking at the page that has the code on it you would just copy the top side um, the very top web address right and this one is actually a really cool strip mining one so if we go into here and I just backspace all this stuff out of here getting rid of the actual web address part of it and we just use these the the letters that are at the very back it's super easy to actually install that into your turtle so the the way that we do it is we go paste bin paste bin type in git you throw down that code that's at the end and then at the end of that you will name what you'd like it to be called so in this case I think I'm gonna call it tunnel 2 because I already have our because there's already a pre-built tunneling program in here so I'm just gonna call it tunnel 2 and when we hit enter it connect it says it's connecting to pastebin.com it was successful and it's now downloaded as tunnel 2 so uh, now if we ever want when we want to run this and if I just hit escape and we'll head down into uh, the mine and I can show you guys how this works it's a really too, cool turtle program because it only um, it only does a one wide tunnel, but it also places down torches every 10 blocks, and then it will return back to its original position. So if I throw down my turtle right here now, and the thing that you have to have is you got to have torches down in slot number um, 16 here and also the fuel right in uh, slot number 15. So now if I type in tunnel two, it's gonna ask me the tunnel length and I'm just gonna go 21 um, and then you guys can see how this works. It just does a one wide tunnel, it will go along and if there's an open area, open space below it, it will place down a block and once it reaches block 10 like that, it turns around, it places a turtle, and it keeps on going. And then I'm just uh, looking around to make sure I don't have any mobs coming at me. And then once it gets to position 21, um, it will pay, place a, another torch at 20 right there. Then it moves up, goes back one more, and then it comes all the way back to us. So this program is definitely cool. And instead of writing out the 60, I think it was like 60 lines of code or something like that, it's pretty long. If we do um, edit tunnel 
two right here, it's quite long. So Luke and Rizard um, did this. Right here it says to place the fuel in slot um, 15 and then torches in slot 16. And then it just does all these commands. So it has functions in there and all kinds of stuff. So instead of me having to type out all this stuff, I simply just did the paste bin get, or paste bin space get the last characters of the actual address and then just named it and boom, that was it. So let's go back up to the uh, top floor here and uh, I'm gonna move on to the next part. Hey guys, we are back and sorry that this video is late. I've been sick the last few days and I didn't want to record while I was sick so I'm feeling better now which is good um, but sorry that the video has, is uh, a bit delayed. Um, I'm gonna, going to talk about this. Uh, the whole setup that I got here, we have a bat box, we have a macerator which we did in the last one, we also have an extractor. The thing that's really cool about an extractor is when you use a sticky resin, if you just throw one piece of sticky resin in there, it will go and it will give us three pieces of rubber. As opposed to if we just had it in a regular furnace, it only gives us one piece of rubber per, per sticky resin. So the by using an extractor, it triples the, um, the amount that you get back. So there's our one piece there. We can take a look at the extractor right here. You guys can see we got three back. So it's uh, definitely cool and it's not that tough to build either. If we take a look here at the extractor right here, it's uh, pretty simple to build. An electric circuit, which we've done before, machine block, which we've done before, and then you just use the four tree taps, which I which I think we did that before as well. So it's a pretty pretty simple way to um, get a lot more um, a lot more product for one piece of stick, sticky resin. So uh, the other thing that I have here is an electric furnace, which is basically just like an iron furnace, but it's hooked up to the electric power. Um, the thing that's really cool about this, I will also leave a link in the description, is these are wind, these are water mills. And I'll leave a link in the description for Josh SDH's um, video where he created these windmills. And the pool that I have back here is pretty simple. It's three deep, one, two, three. And then you just throw a uh, water mill right in the center so it has an open water block all the way around. And we're going to get out of here real quick so we don't drown. But I have them spaced out too wide on each side. That's the way it's taking all the water that it possibly can. And then this is just a simple tin pipe. So the, or tin wire rather. So the tin wire goes over into our bat box, right? So this is where everything um, is stored and you can charge up your jet pack and other things that need charging. You can just throw right in the bat box. And then uh, from here, this is how I have all of these powered. This is how I have the electric furnace powered, the extractor powered, and our macerator powered is just by using some um, insulated copper cable. So we've done the copper cable before when we did the uh, macerator because I think I believe we had to use the copper cable in there. So um, like I mentioned, I'll leave that link in the description. It's a pretty good one. Um, uh, Josh, um, he's, he's a cool cat. I've known him since Minecon 2011. Also met him at PlayOnCon. And uh, last night, as I mentioned, um, when he was talking about Pastebin, it was him, Aztec, and myself. We were all talking while Josh was streaming, so it was, it was pretty cool. Now, I think, um, let's see, uh, I'm going to take a quick break here, and I'm going to plan out what to show you guys next. Hey, so guys, we watch. are back, and uh, we're going to go down to the nether next, but I wanted to show you guys um, this setup. So um, I'm gonna, I've made a hazmat suit. If I open up um, inventory right here, you guys can see I'm completely decked out in a nice little hazmat suit. We have a scuba helmet, um, hazmat suit chest, and hazmat suit leggings, and then rubber boots. Now, um, I'll show you guys how these are done, uh, show you the recipe anyway. So for the scuba, scuba helmet, it's uh, pretty simple. You just use orange dye here, you use piece, four pieces of rubber, a glass block, and then iron, iron bars. So uh, for that, it's, uh, it's definitely cool. And then also if we look up the hazmat suit, that's pretty simple to make as well. 
So we'll look at the chest plate first. Also uses the orange die and we got six pieces of rubber and to get the orange die we actually just do um, I think there was a simple way of doing it yeah right here buttercups which is a flower you just throw them up into your inventory and it turns into this orange die which is uh, definitely cool and then also the leggings same way orange die six pieces of rubber and then also the uh, rubber boots and those are pretty simple to do as well so as you guys can see with this it definitely helps to have the extractor because then you're getting um, more pieces of rubber out of a one piece of sticky resin and then so it's the six again and then just a block of some sort of wool which is uh, definitely cool so now that we're decked out in our nice little hazmat suit here we're gonna head down to the nether. The reason that the reason for a hazmat suit is because you don't catch on fire. It takes some of the damage, and it's just it's a good protection for being down in the down in the nether instead of just going down there um, and dying if you get taken out. So I've made this uh, little um, stand on a book, and the book was super simple to make the book. All you do. You make the book normally, and then once you have your um, book created, you wherever you're standing at, you just move it up into your little um, into your area up here, and then that will give you uh, your starting point. And you can only link them to the Nether. So I have one going from the Nether um, into the Nether here, and then I also have a second one. And for the second book, I was down here, and I just put it in that inventory again and then uh, it gave us this book and then we built the uh, book stand so I can now just click this book to travel back and forth to the in to the nether instead of going all the way down um, and I can show you guys this quick instead of having to go all the way uh, over that way where the actual uh, nether portal is so um, it, it definitely makes it a lot simpler and a lot faster travel so let's uh, cruise right down there quick and right down here we have it so I've cleared this little area out I'm going to grab um, a sword and we are gonna go for a little uh, trip uh, this is Wes's um, lava machine so it picks up lava or something like that I believe uh, it's pretty cool and then normally the portal would have dropped you out right here so um, it, it definitely helps just having that uh, that little book and then uh, we are going to take a trip over to the uh, blaze blaze uh, spawner that we have. Now I do plan on doing a blaze farm out of this, and that's kind of why I have the soul shard right here. It says blaze. Um, so far I've killed 24 blaze, and uh, the thing that's nice about the vile sword here, it has that enchantment called soul stealer on it. And with the soul stealer, uh, when you kill a blaze, as long as the soul shard is down in your hot bar here and you kill him with the sword then it will give you five more levels so if you just kill one um, it would give you five um, more killed instead of just one killed so um, that's kind of the idea behind it and I've kind of made up these arches along the way um, this I did not originally find the blaze spawner somebody else did um, but I was looking around and then I made all these cobblestone arches so it leads right to our to the main blaze spawner so there's two blaze spawners down here if um, they're not I don't they're not next to each other but if you guys can see on my um, on my locations right there uh, we have blaze blaze two and blaze one right now we are heading over to blaze number one I believe and it should be right back here which it is and uh, yeah it's it's definitely cool I do plan on doing a blaze farm so if you guys would like to see that on video just please leave me a comment and I will uh, show you guys um, how I'm creating it but um, I'm gonna move over to this side real quick and show you these uh, signs that I have set up so right now we have this arch set up and it makes it a lot easier to kill the blaze because you can just stand right out here so here's the directions use bow and arrow keep gate closed gate being this 
uh, shoot above the gate. When mobs are dead, walk in, collect goodies, XP, close gate. So um, right there you guys can see the blaze spawner. And when the blaze actually spawn, we can just sit here and pick them off with a bow. And then if they try shooting at us, we can just move one side or the other. And because we have our hazmat suit, it definitely helps out. So I'm going to try to collect some blaze right now. So I'm going to take, some, take a quick break and get some blaze in here. And then we're going to take some of these blaze out. So hang tight, folks. Hey, we'll guys, we up. are back. And there is some blaze in here now. So um, I can kind of show you he's hanging out right around the corner here. And hopefully we can just take him out from the uh, gate right here and then he's shooting so we just move off to the side and uh, like I mentioned once I have that blaze farm actually set up it's gonna make this a lot easier so right there so we had 24 um, blaze before right so we had 24 in here now we're up to 29 because we gained five more kill levels just by taking out one blaze so the next time it's gonna be five more the next time five more and it just accumulates a heck of a lot quicker than taking out one at a time so um, that is uh, definitely cool and because he's hanging out way back there here he comes could shoot him with the bow to get his get his attention and then hopefully he will uh, trout right on over here and then we can just finish him off and now uh, this should be gained up even more so come on over here blazes so we were at 29 now if we open up the inventory and take a look again we're at 34 so as you guys can see it really improves a, a ton because ideally and I'm just gonna go over into the uh, recharge health safe area so when you do get hit by them you can just come in here you can hang out um, I'll probably do some sort of ender chest in here eventually so I can just have it uh, connected right to my base um, but uh, you can just recharge your health back here and then go back in and try to take out some more. So uh, for, for the blaze, for the uh, soul shards, what I want to do is I want to get this up to a level 5. The reason to get it up to a level 5, it is uh, quite a bit. So if we do soul, soul shards, so a tier 3, tier 2, tier 1 tier 5 so as you guys can see right here uh, soul shard to get to a tier 5 you actually have to have uh, 1024 of kills right for the blaze so with the soul stealer um, enchantment which was a level 3 enchantment on our vile sword it will make it go five times faster because each one kill we get now equals five so um, yeah I'm going to uh, continue this on for a little bit guys and then um, I will be uh, right back so hey guys we are back at base and I'm gonna I'm gonna start out by correcting myself because um, I said in the video that this was a level 3 enchantment it's actually a level 30 enchantment to get the soul stealer on there so it has to be um, a level 30 enchantment to get that soul stealer and you're not gonna get it every single time and you can only get it on the vile sword so you're not gonna get it every single time but that's the main one that you want uh, Vorpal too right there what Vorpal means is when you uh, hit skeletons and that sort of thing it kinda it, you get a chance of uh, a bigger chance of getting their heads so it's <laughs> it's definitely cool and then sharpness 3 is a uh, is a pretty decent a chant as well but um, so guys I think I'm gonna call the video good here um, well no I'm not actually I'm gonna show you guys how we can get these soul shards so to get the soul shards basically you have to let's open up the inventory here and see if we can uh, just click on a soul shard to get the soul shard you have to use the corrupted essence and then a diamond you need eight correct corrupted essence and a diamond to get three soul shards so the soul shards by themselves um, if you have one down in your hot bar uh, it depends which mob you kill first and that's kinda what designates what the soul shard will be so each soul shard has to be a different mob or it can be the same mob so let's say you wanted a soul shard for skeletons and you wanted one for the blaze well 
you can't have them both on one soul shard. You'd have to have the two different soul shards. Um, one, the first kill would be with the blaze. And then for the skeletons, your first kill would have to be a skeleton with a separate soul shard. So to get the corrupted essence, uh, basically you have to have vile dust and a piece of glowstone dust. And uh, let, let me uh, let me show you guys something real quick here if I can find that soul shard again okay so up here you guys it says soul forge right so to this has to be cooked in a soul sh soul forge it can't be cooked in a furnace it actually has to be in a soul forge and uh, to make the soul forge which is right here you basically have to use a corrupted essence some uh, three, four, five pieces of obsidian and some small, smooth stone across the top, which gives you your soul forge. So um, that's the first part of it. We're going to click back on this on this part here. And like I mentioned, to get three soul shards, you have to use eight pieces of corrupted essence and one diamond. And it takes a long time for it to cook in the soul forge. It takes, I think it's like 11 minutes or something like that. So it does take a long time to cook up. But to get the... Uh, corrupted essence you have to use a piece of glowstone dust you have to use some vile dust to get the vile dust it's very simple all you need is a soul sh soul sand and you can just smelt up the soul sand so um, it's just a uh, as simple as that and it's uh it's definitely a cool definitely a cool little setup and then one vile dust one glowstone dust gives you corrupted essence for the soul forge you need to have one for the soul shard you need to have eight so it's uh, definitely a cool little addition um, and I think it's definitely going to be a good one and like I mentioned guys if you guys would like to see me uh, build the actual um, blaze uh, farm I've done that on my old videos on my on my old channel um, I, I did it a couple of times on there but if you guys want to see it on video just leave me a comment and um, I will try to do that uh, next time around or um, maybe do a cool builds or something like that so uh, just please let me know guys but now I think I'm gonna call the video good um, thank you guys so much for watching this is pool shark wizard I, I appreciate you guys watching leave a like leave a comment let me know what you guys would like to see in upcoming episodes and I know from the last episode to this one I did a whole lot of work on here um, and it's just great I'm really enjoying the feed the beast um, I have not played vanilla minecraft for quite some time now and feed the beast is just it's it's a lot of fun because there's so many different things to it so guys this is pool shark wizard thank you guys so much for watching as always and i will see you guys next time take care and bye bye